broken. You've got bags. It took some time for our schedules to line up, but I was finally able to find a weekend where Craig and I could go camping. He always stays so busy with work and the kids, but it's good to know that we'll be able to just spend some time relaxing together in nature. Oh, I should probably, I guess, make mention of this. The second date where uh, River loses the capybara Arnold. Uh, if you find it, which you can, it's possible. I just flub flubbed up the first time. Um, you get to go to brunch and then your character makes some comment to Craig about how they should go camping sometime, like with no kids. Just them, just the two of them out somewhere. So that's kind of where the whole camping thing came from. Just in case you were kind of like, why camping? That's random, but it makes sense, I promise. Since our first run, I've managed to go on regular runs with Craig. I mostly do them because it seems like the only time we get to hang out. But the added benefit is that I seem to see, I've seen a lot of improvement in my health. That's a good, that's a good bonus. I was able to shift through the attic to find my old camping gear from college. Craig put me in charge of bringing the sleeping bags in the tent while he takes care of the food. So I'll double check to make sure everything is ready to go. Craig should be here any minute now. Maya's going to be spending this weekend on a school trip to our nation, nation's capital. Blah, blah. She hasn't been away from home without me for a long, for longer than a day since she was 14. I, I hope she isn't feeling as nervous about it as I am. Hey, Amanda Panda. Amanda's in the middle of sitting on top of her luggage in order to get it to finally zip. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bops. Ready for your trip? Once I get this bad boy all zipped up, I'm good to go. How much did you pack? That seems like a lot for two days. Oh, it's all my camera equipment. Oh, lenses, tripod, flash, all that. Are you even going to have time to take a pictures? I'll find a way. I need to get some good shots for my series on national monuments. Oh, what's the series about? Huh? It's one of those internet series where I reimagine Disney princesses as, as founding fathers. That sounds cool. I'd love to see that. What? Hmm. Um, oh. I would like to see that. That'd be cool. I'm kidding. Nobody likes those. I do. Kind of. I would. I think that'd be interesting. I'm taking portraits of my friends. Oh, well, I'm going to be in the woods. Out there. Nature. You know. Reffing it. This is me and Mother Nature. Old Madre de Trees. Are you going to be alright on your own? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not going to have any signal out there. I won't be able to text or call you at all. Huh. Oh, it's alright. I'll be able to survive a couple days without constant updates on who just got voted off of International Haunted, haunted House Hunters. <laughs> well, I'll miss you. And for the record, Bradley was pushed down a flight of or ornate stairs by a ghost. They're really beautiful stairs. <laughs> Amanda finishes zipping up the big suitcase and lugs it, to the, uh, lugs it next to the door of her bedroom. She turns around and gives me a big hug. Relax, Dadtron. I'm a big kid now. I can take care of myself. Besides, I gotta share a room with Monica Sanders and two mom chaperones. The most trouble I can possibly get into is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Hey, that sounds like a pretty good trouble. I, I wanna do that. Oh, well, alright. Don't steal anything, okay? Mm -hmm. Since you asked so nicely, fine. I promise. <laughs> I step outside, hauling my bags behind me. Craig's already strapping, sorry, strapped some camping gear on top of my modest but stylish car. He notices me carrying my equipment and hurries over to take it from me. Oh, such a gentleman. I almost had a case of, <laughs> I almost had a case of, the, case of the vapors there. Ah, that was terrible. Holy shit, I'm sorry about that. Never fear, these muscles are made for picking up heavy things and putting them on other places. Remember, it's your weekend to relax. Take it easy. I guess I can't argue with that. No, you can't. Everything go with Amanda? I think. Yep, on our way to a school field, school trip to Washington, D.C. What about your offspring? Oh. Already at Smashes for the weekend. I'm ready to get my camp on. Woo! I load the rest of my stuff into Craig's car. We get, we get, we get in. Wait. Craig's car or my car? That was my car we're taking. This looks like my car. Did I miss something? Did I? Okay. Oh, no. What's wrong? I think I left my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back for a juicer? Did you leave the juicer on too? Uh, no. Are you worried that someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? No, it's just... I just try to relax, man. A 
the juicer float away. Take all of your worries and blend them into a pulpy good vibes. That's disgusting sounding. Craig takes a deep breath. Do we have anything to listen to? Uh, all I had in my place was is a series of CDs that guide you through a through a thorough and intense calisthenic workout. Do you want to listen to those? Um, I'm just kidding. Craig hands me a thick case filled with CDs. Take your pick. I thumb through the page after page of kid kids sing along CDs. Oh, that sounds like fun. Oh yeah, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star it takes me back. Keep going. I get to the end of the case to find in the very last slot a blank CD with Craig's handwriting on it. DJ Kickstand's Mega Mix Volume One. Made it just for the trip. I think you'll like it. I pop in the I pop the CD into the car stereo and it. it it's like I immediately transported back to our old dorm room. Hit after hit plays, and soon enough we're both happily scream singing the lyrics to each song as we fly down the highway. <laughs> this song was Carl's favorite. Carl, the third roommate! You brought that dog home one night and I couldn't pry you two apart. So we spent the entire semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange student roommate who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog, dog's, bark. Dog, dog's bark. I can't talk. But another point, how the hell did they manage that? I mean, yeah, college is carefree and everything, but people keep really tight track records on everything that every, you know, person does on there. At least when it, was, it was when I was in college. I don't know. I'm not that old, but uh, duh, I, this would never have happened. This, this would never have happened at my college. And then we had a room inspection. That RA, RA was so suspicious of us, but we could never prove anything. Carl was just under the blanket. Bless that pup's courage under fire. And we did some dumb things back in college. How did the puppies stay quiet? Puppies are not known to be still and silent. That's impressive. For a number of reasons. The hours fly by as we belt out tunes in whatever non-existent key our voice register in. Soon enough, we're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vistas of everything ama amazing that nature has to offer. It feels good to be back out here. Really good. We park our car at the entrance to a familiar trail of high low nature. That's some good ambiance going on in my ears. Hello. Anyway, where were we? Uh, we park our car at the entrance to a familiar trail and load up our gear on our backs. I'm thankful that I've been working on my health over the past couple of weeks. Otherwise, I'd be dreading all the hiking that's about to happen. Craig looks intently at his phone. Everything all right? Yep. Just had to fire up one last work email. Craig pockets the phone. We start off the trail. It's relatively easy, but I know I... I know I would be have been huffing and puffing at this point if I weren't if it weren't for all the murder sprints. I look around me and take in the tall trees and animal chirps. Everything okay back there? There's no reception out here. Oh yeah, being out in the middle of nowhere will do that. I recognize the look of anxiety on Craig's face. But what if there's a problem? There won't be. It'll be fine. Come on, bud. Who's a relaxed boy? I don't know. Craig? Mm -hmm. I'm a relaxed boy. Yay! That's my dude. <laughs> we keep marching down the trail, but it seems like Craig is still worried. After a bit, he stops in his tracks. I... Maybe we should go back. We can find another campground that gets good cell phone reception. Craig? Seriously, what's wrong? I mean, I'm just really nervous. My dad instinct is kicking in and my mind is conjuring up all sorts of worst case scenarios. What if something happens to the girls? What if I don't have, if I don't have signal, I won't know, have any way of knowing. Let me tell you, that feeling never goes away, no matter how old your kids get. You're just gonna have to remind yourself that they're in good hands. Craig doesn't say anything. I give him a reassuring punch to the shoulder. I try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get away from all and just focus on ourselves on the, for this little trip. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing out in the woods. What could possibly go wrong? Craig looks at me directly, directly, directly in the eye. Directly, directly? That's that's an intense glare, I guess, or look. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing out in the woods. We're gonna have some fun this weekend. Craig and I get back to marching. It's not too long before a hike. Uh, it's not too long of a hike before we get to the campsite, and we're both glad to see it that we were the only people there. I can't believe you still have this tent. Found in the attic and I already checked for holes. It's seen better days, sure, but I think we'll be able to survive. I dump the bag of fabric and poles onto the ground. We unfold the tent to the desired spot. A hand Craig a stake. We still know how to do this, right? Of course we do! We do not. <laughs> After 20 minutes of struggling like people have embedded from commercials. 
Ah, oh, we somehow managed to build an upright structure that closely resembles what a tent would look like if you asked somebody to draw a tent, a picture of one with, with their eyes shut. Well, I mean, works, I suppose. I wouldn't put this up against a storm, but I think we will we'll be able to survive the night. We set a couple of chairs and our cooking equipment, admiring our handiwork. Bro, look at us go! Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this rock we shall grill our meats and drink our brews. Will we hold dom dominion over this land? Did I say that right? Ah. Barely. And, uh, look at our camping chairs, which we are going to sit on. So what's next on the camp scrap again the dark docket? Well, now that we have a, sh a shelter settled, I think it's time for us to do some exploring. There's a waterfall a little bit up the way that I'm sure we could we could hike to. Let's get hiking! Greg and I venture into the woods. We amble along, taking our time to chat and admire the wildlife. Greg reaches his arm out and stops me. Dude, does that look like what I think it looks like? Oh my god, it's a log! No, I'm kidding. What is it? I look over to where he's pointing. Oh my god, it does. That tree looks like a butt. <laughs> I can't get over how detailed it is. I Why are we so fixated on this tree? I examine the butt tree further. The contour is perfect. It even has little has back dimples. What the fuck? I thought we were going to have a great time camping. But uh, this makes it even better. Craig holds back a snicker. I aspire to have every hike be as good as this one. I'm snickering now too. Let us analyze the tree further. Oh my god. Greg and I share a huge belly laugh over our, all for jokes. The best thing about this is that there's no daughters here to tell us our jokes are bad. We high five. Greg and I hit the trail again. It's been a long time since we've looked, we've been out here, but everything seems more or less familiar. We point out old landmarks that we remember back from our college days. It looks like we're getting close now. Hmm. Check it out! There's clearing up ahead. As we get closer, I can hear water running. Oh, that's so pretty! Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I kind of want to go to a place like this. This is nice. Cresting over the hill, Craig and I are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of us is a beautiful waterfall spilling into a large body of water that runs into a river. Mouths agape with the genuine beauty, beauty of this place, we go to investigate. The old waterfall. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Nature's so rad. Peering further, we get an idea of how deep the pool is. Think we could jump off that off it like old days? Ha! This old dad is happy here on dry land. Mm -hmm. Looks like you could climb right up over there. We didn't even bring swimming trunks. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Craig, okay, well, uh, Craig? Craig, <laughs> okay. Craig immediately begins taking off, off, taking his clothes off. Okay, well. Holy shit! Pardon me, I'm gonna have a, <clears throat> gonna have a, I'm gonna have a moment here. Oh. <sighs> okay, no, I'm fine. Look at his butt, look at his butt. I can't help but sneak a peek. That, that is a good butt. <laughs> Craig, oh shit. Craig turns around suddenly, he catches me looking. I had to do a lot of glute works, workouts. I immediately turn away blushing. Oh, oh. You coming or what? Oh, uh, I don't know about this, dude. He already, he's already making his way over to the waterfall by the time I finish my sentence. When he realizes I'm not right behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. <laughs> you keep bouncing around the place, Craig. What's up with you? We lived together for years. I've seen your ass more times than I can count. It's no big deal. Yeah, but you're hot and I'm flabby in all the wrong ways. Fuck it. Let's put on a show! The clothes are coming off, then it's someone's birthday. Is that a saying? Is that a saying? I don't think it's a saying. Craig gives me the gives me the wolf whistle. I sure <laughs> I turn around and give my booty a good spank. <laughs> That's one for you, big boy. Take my shirt off and drop it in a pile with Craig's clothes. Put the rest of my clothes on the ground, feeling exposed. Craig and I climb to the top of the waterfall and make it sure not to slip on any wet, rock, wet rocks. Blah, blah. He reaches the peak before I do and offers me a hand getting up. At the top, we look over the cliff into the tiny lake. It seems so much higher from the, from this perspective. Craig has always been a daredevil. He pulled off some stunts in college, and I'm honestly so shocked he survived. 
I was always the one sitting on the sidelines watching and hoping I wouldn't have to bring my, him home in a gurney. Man, this could be dangerous. Craig looks at me in the eye. Mm -hmm. Don't think, just jump. How? Craig cannonballs off the waterfall and into the lake, creating a huge splash. I'm worried for a moment before he finally resurfaces from under the water. <laughs> Woo! He treads water and looks up at me. You coming or what? Don't think, just jump. How are you supposed to not think? I'm pretty sure that's like not physically possible. My toes grip the edge of the rock. The water looks so far away. Don't think, just... I run at the edge, try and do my best cannonball. Somewhere in the middle, it turns to a really graceful belly flop. Ow. Ow. I hit the water with a loud slap. I resurface to find Craig giggling. Oh. I write that belly flop and solid 10 out of 8. Your form was lacking, but your heart was at the right place. I playfully splash water at Craig. Mm -hmm. Are you sure about that? I splash him again. Oh. You've given me no choice. Craig splashes me in the face with a huge wave of water. You awakened the beast. He launches another wave of water at me. Don't you put me in a corner here. Don't put a wild animal in the corner. Uh. Dunk him. I lunge for Craig and manage to get him in an arm lock. Time for the finishing move. I summon all of my dad's strength to lift Craig out of the water. Hey! hey. Well, I mean, he said it for me, but hey, hey! And I drop him down for the splash. Craig bounces back out of the water. Hey. My turn. Oh no. It seems like Craig was simply allowed me to pick him up and dunk him. He grapples me. With, he grapples me with his su clearly superior muscles and quite literally tosses me across the water and emerge from the water devastated. Oh. You think all those pull-ups I did just to good luck with my shirt off? Nah, bro, these arms, these arm cannons are daddy launchers. <laughs> oh, it's silly, but I love it. Craig does a playful flex for me. Damn. Craig, truce, please. Craig thinks about it. Huh? Yeah, sure. We shake hands. There is there is peace. Man, that jump was sure an adrenaline rush. Oh. Not so scary now, huh? Nah, it's still pretty terrifying. I race to the top. We run our old way up to the slick rocks and cannonball off the waterfall again. What a rush. Good for another one? Wanna go again? You know it. With the same energy we had in our youth, we climb back to the top of the waterfall. I'm brave enough to try a flip, which I'm sure looks incredibly graceful as I belly flop into the water. Really? Round two for belly flops. Really? Was that necessary? Phew, man. This is fun. Got one more in ya? I live for danger. Takes us a little more time, but we get to the waterfall and both of us do our best running jump into the water below. Alright, I think that's my limit. We should get going before it gets too dark. You're right. We should probably head back. Yeah. We go to put our clothes back on and notice that they're soaking wet. Maybe a splash fight wasn't the best idea. How close were they to the water? You should put them like a good distance away. Jesus. That's okay. We'll get a fire going in no time. We can dry off and get some thinner dinner going. Yay, food. Stop. Oh, it got really dark really fast. Holy crap. Stopping when we hike, we hike back to the camp and unpack everything we need for dinner. Craig pulls out a couple of steaks and some chopped potatoes in a tin foil. Hmm. You ready for a feast? Hey man, take a seat. The Craig train is pulling into the relaxation station. I'm a, and I'm your conductor. Let me cook for you. Absolutely not. Cooking is the thing that relaxes me the most. I'll take it from here. Craig cooks now. Remember his entire sophomore year diet consisted of microwavable mac and cheese, but not microwaved and having trouble believing that the thing and having trouble believing the thing he just said. How would you not want to? It's not that hard. It's my it's mac and cheese. Good God. And how that's microwaved. It's like 30 seconds you have macky cheesy goodness. What is wrong with you? At least let me start the fire. Hmm. Sure, let me just grab my matches. Craig reaches into his backpack. He arms around in the bag, pulling out things and checking every pocket. Uh oh. I don't know. I know I packed it. Craig checks another bag and still can't find it. Are you shitting me? My stomach grumbles and now I'm more acutely aware of how cold and wet I am. We really need to get this fire started. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world. Oh. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I could have sworn it packed it. I'm sorry, dude. Don't be. We can figure this out. We can start a fire. We're smart guys. I mean, how hard could it be? I've watched plenty of survival programs on TV. <laughs> I think that rhymed. Huh? If a naked reality TV star can do it, so can we. That's the confidence we need. We'll need some wood. And just to the trees around us. Oh, man. <laughs> There's no shortage of that there. And some tinder. Oh. We can make that work. And then some... Ancient aliens are supposed to come by and give us advanced technology. 
or when I'm in her house, depending on the show. <laughs> really? What are these shows? Good God. Craig and I gather a variety of wood, bark, and moss until we all have the materials that could con conceptually make a passable looking campfire. Oh. Just had fire, right? That's the fun part. <laughs> the sun is just now setting and a cool breeze rustles the leaves of the trees around us. We have to work quick. Mm. I've done this in the past and I can figure it out. Just give me a second. Anyway, you can help? Mm. Give me some moral support. Lift my spirits and we'll make this fire happen. <laughs> oh, we're bored with compliments. You're really giving that fire the business. You're an amazing, hardworking father with a steady work ethic and, a, and everybody loves you. Your daughters think you're a superhero and the neighborhood dads respect you immensely. Also, your butt looks great. <laughs> Bro, stop. You're making me cry. Okay, okay. Don't want your tears putting out the fire. Oh, jeez. Craig eventually gets his... Oh, hey, hey. Eventually, Craig is meticulously able to get something going. He blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss... Yeah, glowing moss, okay. Into the base of the pit. Soon enough, we have a nice little fire going. Way to go, man. We're regular old outdoorsy fellas. Oh. Hooray for not dying. I take a seat in one of the lawn chairs Craig brought and cozy up to the fire, warming up my hands. Hmm. Relax, man. Take it easy. Let me handle the dinner. I watch as Craig soaks the fire and sets up a makeshift grill for the steaks. After that, hiking and swimming and the fire starting, I'm able to relax a bit. With the sound of crickets and the sound of steak filling the air, I actually feel pretty calm. Craig expertly sears two steaks at a pan he's been hanging up on the fire, crackling, cracking thyme and crushing ginger over it while basting them both in butter. Oh my god. That sounds freaking delicious. Ah, I didn't know he was actually good at cooking. The fanciest I ever saw him in college was when he started sprinkling the seasoning packet onto dry ramen and eating it straight up. That is disgusting. Oh my god. Why? When did this happen? You used to eat cereal every morning with beer instead of milk. That's also disgusting. What the hell, man? Mm. I grew up, I guess. I think you're just about ready. Craig pulls the steaks onto a paper plate and sets them aside. I starts to reach for one, but Craig smacks my hand away. Mm -hmm. Dude, let them rest. Be more flavor flavorful that way. I patiently return to my seat, eyeing the steaks longingly from a distance. They smell incredible. Craig prepares a side salad for, for us in the meantime, sprinkling feta cheese onto freshly chopped greens. Good God! He plates it next to a generous pile of roasted potatoes covered in olive oil and rosemary. Good God! What did he bring? Where, where's Chef Gordon Ramsay? Is he gonna pop out? Maybe? Maybe not. Once it's all ready, we sit down by the fire and dig in. Mm. Everything tastes okay? I'm in heaven. Oh. That's what I like to hear. Remember how for an entire semester we would eat burritos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Mm. It's so hard not to go back to that. Look at you now, man. You have kids, a great job, and now you can cook like a vengeful wizard whose arch nemesis is a microwavable food. I'm really impressed by how much you've gotten your life together. <laughs> Craig laughs, but there's no humor in it. Uh-oh. Oh. I'm glad you think that. I glance at Craig while he picks at a cell. He really grew out of his baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem so much older than he is. It's a maturity that he didn't have in college. He looks exhausted. You okay? Huh. Yeah. Dude. Bro. Bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> Sorry. Come on, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> I've known you for long enough to see when you're down. Oh, man. I'm tired, bro. Yeah, there's bro. I think I've been, I think I've, I think being out here is making me realize how, just how drained I feel. You work really hard, Craig. It can't be easy. I don't know. I have to. For my girls, I volunteer at the school. I cook healthy meals for them. I do everything I can to make sure they're safe and happy. And when they're with their mom, I always, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. And then you work out a lot so you can crush anyone who stands in their way. Oh. That, and I don't want to fall into my, my old habits. I need to set a good example for my girls. Everything I do is for them, and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it seems like you're bleeding yourself dry. Mm. If that's what it takes to raise them well, then it's worth it. Uh, Craig, buddy, I know where you're coming from, but you gotta take care of yourself, too. Dude. I do, though. I eat right and exercise, and that's not what I mean. You're too little butter on too much toast, you know? Dude. What? You're spreading yourself too thin. Life needs balance. It's great that you can you care this much about your kids, but you can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. You matter too. I don't know. It's just, I know I can provide for my family, and if I take a step back and look at everything objectively, I know I'm doing the right. I'm not doing right by them. I... But I can't explain it, man. There's always that voice in the back of my head telling me that I need to do more. 
It's like it's never enough for me. Even every time I try to relax, that voice keeps telling me I didn't deserve to be. I didn't. I don't deserve it. To be honest, I feel guilty about being out here. Okay, you're trying your best and you're doing an amazing job. That's that's a fact. But even if you weren't, you still deserve happiness. Oh. Do I though? Oh. Bro, you're bringing out the big guns now. I will, I will word talk you into uh, submission. That was terrible. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. I look at Craig and think about what a good friend and even better father he is. He's compassionate. He's hardworking. He's relentlessly positive. He just encourages everybody to be the best version of themselves. He makes me want to be a better person. If you could only see yourself the way I see you. Oh. Craig beams. He gets up and walks over to his supplies. Oh. Come on, I brought dessert. <clears throat> oh, are you going to use the campfire to torch the tops of some creme brulee? Mm -hmm. What? I know little to nothing about cooking. Actually, I do know how to make creme brulee. I just don't have a torch. Or else I would probably make creme brulee every single freaking day of the year. And I would never be able to walk again because I would just be so fat. But I love that stuff. Oh, God, it's so good. Greg pulls out marshmallows. Oh, yay. Hi. Well, you still have to make s'mores, right? I think the more important question is, do you know how to make s'mores? So I recall you used to completely, just completely blacken the marshmallows. Hey. Hey. You're tasted that way. It's like you eat the fire and the marshmallow gooeyness. It's perfect. I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I stand by that. It's strong on the outside, but gooey center is, is preserved. Yes, thank you. Oh my god, why does no one else get this? It's so beautiful. It's like, oh, love it. Love it so much. British. Craig throws a marshmallow at me and I catch it in my mouth. I love it. I actually, whenever I used to go, I actually did go camping like a really long time ago. I would literally set my marshmallows on fire and blow them out and then eat them that way because it's just, oh, the char and it's like you get um, some crunchy stuff, but it's so really sweet and you get like, oh, it's so, oh, it's so perfect. Oh, I love that kind of marshmallow. Oh. Bro, move. We used to be able to do that at a great distance against the wind disadvantage. Give me a week of practice and I'll be competitive again. Gray and I send the warm glow of the campfire watching embers float up towards the sky. The stars are so much brighter out right here. Yeah. I miss this, Sydney. Oh, Me too. We stay here until it gets late, half remembering stories from college. We watch as the fire dies and eventually clamber into the tent. We're gonna go to sleep now. We crawl into the tent and I unfurl my sleeping bag. Oh. Wait, where's the other sleeping bag? I look around for the second. Oh, really? Really? We didn't bring matches and a second sleeping bag. Are you shitting me? Oh no, I must have left it at home. Are you shitting me? It's all yours, dude. I'm sorry. I'll just curl up over here. Mm. No way, here. Craig unzips the sleeping bag and spreads it out, so there's enough room for us to both lay on top of it. Oh. Night, bro. Good night, bro. Why did we- Stop saying bro. I roll over and we face away from each other. Without a blanket, it's really cold. I shiver without realizing it, I find myself nestling closer to Craig. I'm sure he won't mind. He turns over and I can feel his breath on my neck. It's hard to focus on anything else. I turn over, trying to get more comfortable. I open my eyes to find Craig's face only a few inches from my own. For once, he looks at peace. His eyes flutter open, his flan hand finds a place on my waist. Well, are we going to be doing this, like, <clears throat> some Brokeback Mountain style stuff? I think we are. Yeah. I'm not sure Lean's in first, but suddenly we're kissing. Called it! We look at each other again, my heart racing. Craig. Oh, man. <laughs> Why does he have to say bro? I'm sorry, but that just takes me out of it entirely. <clears throat> anyway, I got feeling strong feelings for you, bro. Feelings I can't deny anymore. Don't say bro. God damn it! Why do you say bro? Me too. God damn it! I run my hands through his hair, down into his chest. Craig brings me closer, wrapping his arms around me. I feel so secure. You know, talking about old times is fun, but I like making new memories with you. I smile, tracing the lines of his hips with my finger. We kiss again. I'm not worried about us getting too cold tonight. We're gonna get it on in the sheets, but it's just a sleeping bag, but it counts. That was a song, right? I think it counts. Oh, is that it? Okay, did that. Yep, there we go. <laughs> We, we banged in the tent. It was glorious. That was a gold medal performance for sure. Oh dear.
Sydney! Brian, we're starting off with you, really? Okay. Brian, you made it! Ha! Huh. Don't pass up a good Mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Just not bad. See, now I know how great- how- just- Brian is such a good guy now that I've actually had the date with him and- He's like a cuddly bear and I love him. I don't understand all the competitiveness. Me! Stop being an ass. God damn it. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you. Don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Sure thing, pal. Say, let me know if you ever want to head out on the lake. I'd be happy to pull you out of the drink again. Deep breaths. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thanks so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. But you're... See, he's a giant ginger bear. He's so cute. Damn it. Hi, <sighs> Joseph. Looks like you've settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep, couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We got a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. And I'm sure the kids would love to see your dance moves again. Sure thing, Joseph. Maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. Sure, Joseph. I'd, that'd be great. Oh, see you later. Who comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese? Ah, my mouth is just feeling weird right now. Oh. Anyway, the perfect chair to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Sydney. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda's going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for her finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. And there she goes. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey. Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Hey, yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Hey, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. Mm. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, and I'm going to break anything I want. There's nothing you can do about it. This is an interesting way to think about it. Are you still mad about the time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Yeah. Nope. Oh. I hope you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place. So, she'll fit in college just fine. Hey. Hey. Hmm. Robert just goes vaguely to the snack table. Uh -huh. Good stuff. Yep. Uh -huh. See you later. Hey. Hey, man. Matt. Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of grateful banana bread ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Oh. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is divine. Yeah, thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. Hey, looks like Amanda's hanging out with Briar and Hazel. Let's see what they're up to. Yes. Okay, Briar, think of a shape. Hazel, what's she thinking of? Square. Briar? Star. We'll get it next time. Amanda leans in close to Brian Hazel, lowering her voice. Hmm. Listen, you guys can be real with me. If you're downplaying your psychic abilities, I want you to know that you can trust me. Heck, you even think of me as a third twin. Um, Amanda? Amanda, that's triplet. Hmm. You know, Dad, by the time I'm done with these kids, we're going to be finishing each other's... What? You didn't finish your sentence. Where are we going to be finishing? Each other's... Hmm. Senses! Oh god, Amanda. See? Third twin! I have to go. <laughs> As the party starts to wind down, I can take a seat on our back porch step. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda wanders over and sits down next to me. And her tongue is still sticking out. Killer party, Pops. I can say I was inspired. So, I uh, also have something for you. Your tongue is still out. I can't take you seriously with your tongue out like that. Oh, there we go. For me, why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings or anything for once, but growing up wasn't easy. It could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've, made the, you've been there for me through everything. There's, there's been times in my life where you were my only friend. Mm -hmm. I was really scared about going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done so far is, for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Sydney, if you cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. Present time! 
Man hands me a tightly wrapped, a tiny wrapped package, not tightly wrapped. To the wrapped paper, off to find a framed picture of Amanda and me. Me and Amanda. That sentence was just butchered up. It's us. Hmm. Kind of shocking all of our fuller albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figure we need at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my li life. That. You're, such, you're such a talented, young, intelligent young woman, and so I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, kid. Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. Aww. This is only the beginning. Pops, plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Oh, oh I'm gonna break so much stuff. Intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably gonna pay for most of it. It'd be my honor. Hell, you know I've started a few fires in my days. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glance over to the back of the yard, where Craig is sitting on a bench beneath her cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emma's are gonna go get ice cream. Love you, pops. Amanda runs off to join her friends. Take a seat next to Craig as as Bella, as the last guest leaves, makes her way out of the party. Bro, bro, stop it. Uh, this reminds me about the parties we used to throw. Few, fewer cake stands, of course. Probably be for the best. I don't want to get my hip replaced after a party trick goes wrong. We can leave cake stands in the past. Hi, am uh, taking this weekend to relax. This party was my first stop out of the express train from the relaxation station. Next stop is Napville. Pull into Sydney Concourse. I'd like to take. I'd like to book a ticket to Napville as well. Oh my god, I love it. Mm. I'm mad to meet you halfway at eating food directly off of your own stomach. Town. <laughs> we both giggle, but man, do I just want to pour some chips onto my belly while I eat out of a hammock. Craig, I'm glad you're making time for yourself. Oh. Me too. Mm. Stress is a fun thing, dude. I didn't realize how over. Oh. Stress is a funny thing, yeah. I didn't realize how it worked it was until we got away from the city. It's honestly just as destructive as destructive as binge drinking every night and eating burritos off the floor. That is disgusting! Why did we do that? I guess we need to get out of the city more often then. Oh. Craig kicks his leg over the side of the bench and leans on me, lying down on my lap. I run my fingers through his hair. You're looking for balance. I admire that. I'm trying not to feel guilty about doing things for myself. It's a process. It's gonna take me some time to figure out. I might need your help, bro. Greg, I'll be your bro to the day I die, and if, it, if being your bro means forcing you to take care of yourself, I'm ha I'll happily oblige. Oh. Craig looks up at me, smiling. Mm. Bro. Mm. That means so much to me. Stop saying bro! Craig sits up and pulls me into a cast. Oh, they're cute, but I don't like the fact they're continually say constantly saying bro. Don't say bro. God damn it! <laughs> We both laugh. Mm -hmm. You and me, we're gonna be alright. 